you. Uh, I think I have seen uh, many familiar faces here. Very happy to see many colleagues from different institutions. Uh, I and Paco have been introducing the core university English, uh, one of the biggest course in the university, um, to all of you in different hub locations uh, at PolyU and CityU last year. And today I would like to share with you something new, right? Um, the project of learning transferability. This is an in-house CAS project, and um, it's only part of the team uh, because we finished a pilot study with CA, uh, CUE, Core University English course, and also education course. And because of the time constraint, I would like to share with you the findings of the pilot study of um, CUE. And uh, we will be working with different program coordinators and core team members. Some of you are, uh, are here, all right, to support us um, uh, in the coming semester. Okay, let me introduce my project members. Uh, Paco, uh, he's the uh, coordinator of the Core University English course. Um, Alice Yao, uh, she's the deputy coordinator of Core University English course. And uh, Loki, a very important person, senior research assistant of this project. Okay, um, let me show you the rundown of the presentation. Uh, I'll take you through to the project objectives quickly. Uh, uh, I'll tell you more about why we initiated this project and introduce to you the research gap, the project scope, research design, key findings, implications, and towards the end, I would like to show you the challenges and what we'll be doing in the future. And uh, you know, this sharing is a show and tell uh, section, and we'll mainly focus on the framework of instrumental measurement for undergraduate course review to prepare for the evaluation of learning transfer. And uh, we're using four variables, four constructs. They are um, uh, content relevance, understanding of learning, uh, transfer applicability, and transfer outcomes. And of you will be uh, introducing this whole construct to you um, in a minute. And uh, this framework is very, uh, hopefully, it will be useful for uh, especially project coordinators, sorry, course coordinators, to develop better pedagogy and uh, motivate learners to be more engaged in transfer in their university studies. All right, um, project title. We have done the pilot study last year, last semester, from late October last year to August, um, I mean this summer. And this is the project title. And today I would like to focus on the findings on core university English. And the main study we've just been started uh, from this September onwards. It's a three year uh, study. In the coming semester, uh, we'll be working with different program coordinators from Faculty of Education, Social Sciences, Engineering, Art, and Architecture. All right, uh, let me show you the course development cycle. Um, I'm sure you may be very familiar with this because uh, in your university, you may have similar practice. All of the courses, our CES courses, undergo revision annually during the summer. And um, in the course revision, we're based on course feedback from students, from central student uh, evaluation of teaching and learning, uh, from the student staff consultative committee meeting, and also from the external examiners. We need to respond to all these feedback um, in the summer, and also to improve our course. And um, that's why during the summer, we're going to go through this course revision. And we're going to implement the changes in semester time, right? Uh, but, um, uh, uh, in the meantime, the faculty, we need to respond to faculty changes in the curriculum. So we need to uh, cater for different um, stakeholders' needs. And as there are over 30 some courses in CAS, and the development process will take time, and the pilot of this study, learning of uh, transferability, has already been completed in CUE, CES 1000 course, uh, the general uh, English for academic purposes course, and two education English in the discipline courses. And in the uh, next triennium, uh, hopefully we're going to finish up uh, all the rest of the courses. All right, I'm going to pass the time to um, Alice. Uh, she'll be taking you through to the Core University English. So good afternoon, I'm going to talk about uh, the background of CAS 1000, which you may or may not have heard of. But this is definitely something new. This is a new logo design for this course, with an emphasis of uh, two key components, that is the pencil representing writing, and the two keywords academic success. So CAS 1000, Core University English, also known as CUE, is an, a an EAP course for 2,400 undergraduate first-year Hong Kong U students in each academic year. 
Uh, it is a stepping stone uh, between secondary school English to university English, and it helps students to use uh, academic English more effectively in their university studies. And then uh, in this English learning pathway, there are a few stages which I'm going to illustrate later. The course aims to enhance students' academic English proficiency uh, by introducing them to aspects of writing, speaking, reading, and listening, which cross discipline but are of academic register. So in this course, the students, uh, uh, the students will learn a set of skills, including identifying and distinguish between main arguments and supporting details in academic texts, expressing a critical academic stance, constructing clear and structured arguments with skillful inter integration of academic sources, and demonstrate control of grammatical accuracy and lexical appropriacy. So these academic English literacy skills are essential to students uh, at different stages of their university studies. In the first year, students are also taking common core courses. To help students develop skills needed for these courses, topics and tasks in CUE are designed to align with these courses. Topic students engage critically in CUE are the four areas covered in these common core courses, namely scientific and technological literacy, uh, humanities, global issues, China, culture, state, and society. As for tasks, uh, as research done by, the, by our center has, shown, has, has found that, that is, our essays and reports are the most frequently assigned written tasks, while the tutorial discussions are the most frequently used speaking assessment. So that's why in the CUE, we are focusing on reports, essays, and, uh, and uh, tutorial discussions. And then uh, for this, uh, in the second, uh, third, or fourth year, students will be taking uh, English in the discipline courses, which equip students with communicative skills they need to participate in a particular disciplinary context. Despite the academic uh, conventions of academic uh, communications across disciplines, students still need the skill, for example, to present a coherent uh, argument, to present stance uh, through hedging and also various kinds of evidence, and develop critical reading skills by identifying uh, how an op uh, author's opinions are expressed. So these are the skills students will be equipped in CUE, uh, as mentioned earlier in the learning outcomes, and also, in this new, irresistible, fun, animated course video. Uh, so due to the time constraint, we're not able to show it to you now, but if you're interested and have time, uh, please uh, click the YouTube link and then uh, take a look. So to investigate the extent of students' learned skills in CUE transferred to uh, these learning contexts, a research project led by Natalie uh, was initiated. And then in the following parts, uh, Natalie and Loki will uh, talk about it in detail. So, thank you. All right, let me show you the project scope and the uh, uh, research gap. Uh, as Alice mentioned, CUE is closely aligned uh, with the Common Core Curriculum in Hong Kong U. So that's why um, the scope of the pilot study, we're going to evaluate the learning transfer from CUE to Common Core courses, closely aligned with each other. Uh, that means we would like to know how students could transfer the learning skills from CUE to their Common courses. And uh, actually we did, um, uh, our interview and our online survey to investigate what kind of skills they find transferable, which skills they don't quite transferable, and uh, the extent of transferability, right? And um, based on the findings, we're going to, or actually we did identify areas for improvement in the CUE curriculum development, and uh, our program coordinator will, uh, I think, um, will find this useful actually um, to in make an informed decision of the curriculum changes. <laughs> All right, you may want to know learning transfer in this project, definition of this project. When we teach something, we anticipate to a certain degree that students will make use of what they have been taught to other learning contexts, right? Near transfer or far transfer. And so students could apply the skills in the future class or within the same class, in a future class, another course, or even in an area of the life beyond school, right? Uh, actually, um, uh, we're going to focus on, all right, in this uh, uh, project, learning is the acquisition of knowledge and uh, skills in certain given contexts. And we would like to uh, enable students to recognize uh, the similarities and differences um, in students' experiential growth and learning and before reforming and transfer, uh, transferring all these skills in other new learning contexts. New situations. 
part, what constitutes transfer? Uh, Alan Havila, Professor Alan Havila actually is the founder of CAP. Uh, he gave a very good example. Reading, writing, connections, context. Um, he explained that actually there's a space between what we teach and how students use what we teach. In fact, from student, our teacher's perspective, we need to fill the gap, fill the space between, in order to enable transfer of curves, right? Uh, so how are we going to do it? So actually transfer is a movement between skills, how teachers play a role, or what roles teachers should play in order to fill the gap, and also what teach our students uh, 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 should do in order to, um, I mean, uh, make learn our transfer occur. I'm uh, going to explain it to you later. Transfer and EAP instruction are according to Adam's definition to help students acquire reading writing skills that they can apply or transfer to future source based writing context beyond the writing course. If we teach reading writing skills in a writing course and we expect students to transfer the skills like how to make the argument, how to make the source uh, 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 supporting sources um, in other learning contexts, not only in writing course but in other courses like in history course, in uh, um, a reflective essay or in other different areas. So that's why, say for example, if we're going to teach a synthesizing skills in a writing class, and we not only expect students to apply synthesizing skills in a writing class, in a single class, and we would like them to <coughs> apply the, or transfer the uh, our synthesizing skills from multiple sources in a different areas, like say for example in a research paper, in dissertation, or in other learning contexts. Right? In fact, we have been facing lots of challenges of promoting learning transfer. According to the literature, transfer is very difficult to achieve and very difficult to measure. And it's one of the barriers that we have been facing. How to um, actually measure or uh, 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 transfer a very um, not concrete uh, construct. And so you see, learning and transfer are closely related, right? Um, how we're going to make students um, um, to understand more about transfer or how to make transfer at first, we need to make students to learn, right? To understand what learning is. Uh, successful learning does not automatically lead to successful transfer. They may learn something, but they may not know how to transfer, right? So teachers play a very important role. So transfer is difficult, very difficult to predict or control. So um, in this project, we're going to fill this gap and we're going to make a more targeted and structured study to understand students' perceptions on the learned skills and the extent of learning transferability. And this project this is the will only focus of on perception. students' perceptions. Right. But after the first round, uh, this round of pilot study, and we know that teachers also play a very crucial role in learning transfer, and I want to share with you um, the findings. Okay, project deliverables. Uh, hopefully by the end of the project, we're, we're going to develop better learning and teaching um, materials and also develop a framework of evaluative measurements for undergraduate course review to prepare for the evaluation of learning transfer uh, in a general English for academic purposes course and also in, uh, English in the discipline courses. Um, uh, and also we're based on the uh, 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 as we're moving on to the main study uh, from this semester and we're going to collect more data from different English and discipline courses and we may refine the framework to make it a better model. Alright, this is a very useful book uh, I would like to introduce to you. If you would like to know more about learning transfer and how to improve the uh, writing and reading instruction, uh, you can have a look at this book. Okay, um, let me pass to Lockheed. We will be talking about the research design, how we collect the data. Thank you, everybody. Uh, really quick. First, I have to find my mouse is. All right. Uh, on the research design. Good. Right. So basically, we obviously will have to look into quantitative and qualitative data. Uh, for the quantitative data, as you can see, we actually surveyed over 650 students for both rounds and in week six and in week nine. Uh, the response rate is pretty high, as you can see here, because we actually go into the classroom and conduct that e-survey, which we show them the um, QR code, and the form is a Google form, so everything is evaluated as soon as they you know, key in all the buttons and stuff. Um, then for the analysis, we adopted uh, a PLS-SCM uh, algorithm for an approach, uh, partially squared. 
more detail on that part uh, probably in June. But for now, we're just going to give you a brief um, look into that. Uh, qualitative data, we did five focus groups for 11 CUE or uh, Common Core uh, students, uh, Common Core uh, students, yes, and two focus groups for Common Core teachers. Also, we have two individual interviews. Um, and then we collected all these data, we did anal analysis, um, thematic analysis, and then we extracted all these data. Later, Paco will be presenting those uh, qualitative findings to you. So, uh, the purpose of the in-class e-survey I just mentioned was basically to assess the students' understanding of skills uh, that we taught in the uh, CES 1000, uh, then to identify which kind of skills the students will be able to transfer to, the, to their common core courses, meaning how they will be able to apply them. And so we come up with four constructs out of a total of 81 different constructs from various disciplines. Um, understanding learning, then transfer applicability, content relevance, and transfer outcome. So these are the four. And uh, because we use the PLS partially squares uh, SEM, this is how we will look like uh, in the software. And the, the, ang uh, the angle, uh, sorry, the arrows pointing to each other means how they would affect each other um, in between the constructs. In coming up with these uh, four constructs and the relations, we actually looked at a number of uh, references coming from psychology, from business, and human resources, of obviously also some from education. Um, for those of you who are who may be interested in looking at transfer as well, human um, resource development, they have a huge pool of, of um, you know, papers and articles on transfer, but they will call it training transfer. So that would be uh, different terminology, but about the same thing that we would look at. Um, here we have, yeah, just just uh, some details on the in-class e-survey. It's going to be seven minutes, really, really quick, done on Google form. And then uh, some of the important parts of the e-survey, skills taught in CUE, there will be 12 items, so we call it formative items, meaning that there are different skills, um, questions that they ask about specific skills that we teach them in CUE. Uh, we also have content relevance and transfer outcomes. These are reflective questions, which means that these questions are basically repetitive questions asked in different ways, just to make sure that the, um, the errors are kept low. Uh, of course, we also did something that is not going to be put on the um, uh, POS SEM algorithm. These are the ranking of the top five skills, which are very, very useful for us to get to know what the students really think about the importance of various skills that we teach them very quickly and uh, while we do apply when we do apply the um, algorithm to do all these statistical calculations our focus would be on how each of these constructs will contribute to each other and how far or to what extent that these variables will affect each other because it's very important to know um, you know how large and how how much each of them for example like understanding learning will affect applicability you know. so we do need to have some um, our squares to, to give us the a better idea or clear idea. So I'm going to pass the time to Paco, and he's going to present to you the findings and the implications. Thank you. Okay, so before Paco, oh, I'm sorry. going to present yes. you some quantitative findings. A few, okay, a few uh, quantitative findings. So uh, the statistical data from both rounds of e-survey consistently reveal that all hypothesized relationships of the four constructs of the project have significant effects on one another. In particular, content relevance of CUE curriculum has a strong and direct effect on students' understanding of learning and their transfer outcomes. In the survey, the students were also asked two questions. The first question is about uh, is to ask them to rank top five skills they consider necessary for common core study. And then the second question is to ask them to rank five uh, skills they think they need to improve most. And then uh, from the data shows that is in both rounds of e-survey, uh, the results were also very cons uh, consistent, very consistent. That is, they show that academic writing was ranked the top skills in both questions, same as reading and speaking. But what is missing in the result is that, that uh, in the first question is the skills necessary for the common core study is grammar and vocabulary. So the reason is that uh, there could be no clear assessment criteria in the two language aspects in the common core courses, but the students think that they need to improve these skills the most. And then also for the citation and referencing, they only appear in question one, but not in question two. 
students don't think that they need to improve the skills most because they are, these skills could be quite mechanical and easy to apply and master. So uh, while these findings, okay, these findings of, with these findings, of course, the uh, developers will understand more about students' perception and need in uh, EAP learning, and also have a clearer direction of curriculum development. While these studies review strong content relevance of CUE curriculum to students' learning, the quantitative findings also suggest that students struggled with uh, other academic uh, English skills from CUE to other learning contexts. So there is relatively weak strength of power of transfer in these academic skills, namely formulating a stance, citing other people's work, synthesizing ideas, using signposting, and structuring an academic text coherently. So by learning all these, the CUE core team can revise the materials based on these uh, areas and help students understand and apply these skills more confidently. So as introduced, this study also included the second phase, that is the focus group, meet, uh, the focus group interview. So Paco will now present you some of the, uh, our respondents' comments in the areas of writing, reading, speaking, and learning transfer. So, uh, so um, we have conducted five focus group interviews with students, and we asked students uh, different kinds of questions in different areas and different domains. So to start with, uh, here we go, this is the reading one. Now from the data here, uh, it seems that students got quite a big problem in relation to writing. Yeah? And some, sometimes they do not have a clear idea of about uh, how um, they can clarify or elaborate uh, the argument. The problem is, uh, is probably due to the fact that they don't really know how to um, read or extract useful information from the reading sources. Okay? So um, in the CUE course, we teach students uh, some very important uh, reading, uh, reading techniques or reading approaches. So for example, mining, uh, writing and reading, or also modeling, based on what edit the data suggested. Okay. So uh, from the interview data, it seems that students uh, can transfer their reading and writing skills to their common core curriculum. So the students said, I think reading materials and also writing skills are really useful for my common core course. And then uh, for speaking, it is really very interesting to know that students are uh, in their common core courses, but sometimes um, they um, have to know how to improvise, and they have to know how to respond to challenging questions. So um, they um, students want us to teach them about right, these kind of skills, debating skills, as well as presentation skills. In fact, um, uh, we do teach them critical reading skills and also how to respond to uh, challenging questions. But but the point is, we are not going to focus on debating skills, and also we are not focusing on presentation skills. Instead, we are focusing on group discussion skills, the same kinds of skills. And then uh, for writing, uh, some students find writing very challenging, very difficult. Uh, they might have problems um, if they have to write very concisely and very logically. So one interesting fact is that some students, they don't really need to read a lot, they don't need, really need to write a lot, so for example, these are students, okay? But um, one very good thing is they still do appreciate all the skills they learned in CUE, okay? They believe that when they learn some skills from CUE, and in the future, they can apply what they learn from us in their daily life, and also uh, uh, in some of the different areas. And then uh, during our data collection, uh, students were asked to give some specific examples uh, to illustrate how they apply um, the learned skills from CUE to the Common Core uh, curriculum or in some other learning context. And here we can see that um, in CUE, students are taught uh, how to construct their stance, how to integrate uh, the arguments uh, into um, um, the explanation, and then how to do citation verbally. So apparently, uh, student transfer skills adopted from CUE uh, to the other courses here. And then, um, so from the students' comment here, we can see that students do improve both uh, the writing and speaking skills. So for example, um, they learned uh, the citation and referencing skills uh, from us. And then when they are writing the essay and reports in the old faculty and also the common, course, uh, common core courses, they can apply the skills there. Okay? And then it's also pretty good to know that students from time to time reflect on the roots of their learning problems. So they say, for example, now when they look back, I realize it, 
uh, it was uh, the full structure of the end state also lack of uh, practicing skills. This semester I have uh, overcome this problem. So if you learn uh, the skills here from C and then you can finally apply to the course. And then uh, in C, we teach students uh, <coughs> skills, for example, how to think ideas across the sentences, paragraphs. And then um, we also teach them how to uh, well uh, write the sentences or paragraphs in a coherent way. We also highlight the importance of conforming to a correct uh, citation referencing um, um, style in the academic writing. So from the data here, uh, it seems that the students can transfer the writing skills, the discussion skills, to some other learning context in their studies. And then I'll come to floor back to Natalie, and then she's going to talk about the challenges that was on the way forward. Thank you. All right, we have been facing lots of challenges. Um, to summarize, this is the area. How to motivate students to apply and transfer learning skills from EAP or ESP courses to other learning contexts? Um, they have learned something, all right? From the findings, we know that uh, CUE actually the content in terms of curriculum uh, is very relevant to students' learning. They understand uh, uh, what we uh, what we uh, have taught them. Uh, how to motivate them to transfer? How to make them become more aware of uh, learning transfer? I think that's a very um, important uh, area that we need to do. And roles of teachers. After the pilot study, I, um, I'm very aware of how it grows. Right? EAP, ESP teachers, how are going to facilitate our teaching, our effective teaching in classroom instruction, and how to enable students to see the relevance of our EAP, ESP learning to their university studies. Say, for example, um, I think um, CV teachers uh, should understand more about students' perceptions and needs in EAP. Uh, uh, as what we, are, uh, we share with you, and also to understand more about the common core courses, the assessment types, the learning needs, the requirements. Uh, so in the classroom, uh, students, I'm uh, sorry, teachers could um, uh, uh, let the students know if these are what they will be learning or that we will be doing, and to draw the relationship or let them see the relevance of our EAP ESP courses to the university studies. So that's something uh, the program coordinator we need to do in teacher training in the future. So, um, and also another key challenge is how to enable course coordinators and teachers, team teachers, to understand more about the cost effectiveness of student learning and how to achieve co uh, a good cost effectiveness. All right, how can teachers promote transfer? According to Alice, he has this poll, how we approach our instruction. Right, since we will want to teach in a way that enables transfer to occur. Hong Kong U um, undergoes very rigorous quality assurance. We not only uh, teach students something, we would like to help students learn and transfer what they have learned into practice. So our completion of CUE is not the end of learning. We would like them to apply and transfer the skills in other learning contexts and areas. So we assume that what we teach is transferable and how to make these all things transferable and students will want to transfer what they have been taught, all right, according to the uh, focus group interview and individual interview. And uh, strategies. Help students develop effective transfer habits and skills. So within the classroom, uh, we could ask students uh, questions to uh, let them reflect what they have learned, how they will apply or how they have applied the learned skills into other instruction. Make it more uh, explicit in the classroom instruction and encourage them to apply and traverse the skills by appropriate instructional activities, all right? So through small tasks or group project or assignment, we would like to make it more explicit. Uh, offer more teacher training to support teachers to promote transfer and classroom instruction. Uh, so hopefully we could achieve this uh, 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 e-learning transfer in a more effective way. Okay, going forward, uh, we have been uh, undergoing the main study from this semester and also in the coming semesters. That's what we're going to achieve um, to testify how our courses are well aligned with the faculty curricula, how students could successfully apply the skills learned, or what skills that they may not very successfully apply. All right, that's something we would like to improve. And based on the findings and analysis, and we plan to revise the course and develop new courses when necessary. Okay, thank you very much.